My name is Laureen Lindsay. Uh, the reason I had to go to the doctor, I was having a lot of pain in my shoulder. Dr. Farrell is um, very good at explaining things. Um, I was comfortable with him. My two sons and daughter-in-laws were really, you know, comfortable with him. So he just, he explained things to where I could understand what was going, you know, to take place. So Lorraine came to me complaining of chronic left shoulder pain that she had had for years that had progressively worsened, uh, especially over the last few months. Uh, and she was having difficulty sleeping. And then when she did get to sleep, if she rolled over on her left side, it would wake her up. She had some limited, limited range of motion. She had problems with overhead lifting. She had problems with activities of daily living, such as washing her hair. Unfortunately, she's left-hand dominant, which means she, she was limited uh, you know, with the hand that she used uh, to do most of her activities. Uh, physical exam and x-rays uh, were consistent with uh, osteoarthritis or uh, wear and tear arthritis of the glenohumeral joint of the shoulder. Uh, and basically, uh, what it showed, if you look at her x-rays, is uh, this is a model of the shoulder, and this is the top of the arm, uh, and that's the humeral head and the socket is part of your scapula or your shoulder blade. She had literally worn down all of the cartilage uh, in the shoulder and it was bone sitting on bone. Uh, her rotator cuff was intact. Uh, she, didn't, she didn't have any issues with her rotator cuff. This was strictly a case of, of, of wear and tear, osteoarthritis of the shoulder. So we had a long discussion re regarding what her options would be um, she really maximized non-operative treatment at that point. Uh, over the years, she'd had a previous uh, history of cortisone injections, but the last one she had provided little to no relief. We had, uh, she had been treated with anti-inflammatories and physical therapy. But really, her decision at this point was either to you know, live with it or have surgery. And the surgery is a, sh is a shoulder replacement. And so what that is is, is, is exactly what it sounds like. We go in and, and we give her a new joint. And so on the, on the humeral side, on the arm side, uh, we remove the old ball uh, and she gets a new ball. Uh, and there, there are different, lots of different companies that make these implants, but basically you have a stem uh, of varying lengths that go down the shaft and you have a brand new surface uh, on, the, on the humeral side. You have a brand new joint. Uh, and then on the socket side, uh, we actually go in and put a new socket in. And it's, uh, it's typically made of a substance called polyethylene, uh, which is a sort of a plastic-like material. And then there's some various forms of fixation uh, pegs that go into the bone that are either cemented uh, or there's uh, a, a, some brands have a, a stem that uh, has a porous material where the bone grows into and provides long-term fixation. But there's multiple different kinds. And so that's what it looks like at the end. Uh, there's a, a brand new shoulder. And as, as I said, she's got a rotator cuff that works just fine. Um, that procedure takes about 90 minutes. Uh, typically, it's an inpatient procedure. Uh, the patient's in the hospital for one to three nights. Uh, I have patients in a sling for just about a week or two. Um, I have physical therapy see them the very next day after surgery. Uh, but I get them out of the sling uh, usually by the two-week mark. There's a couple restrictions that they have uh, because we have to repair uh, one of the rotator cuff tendons, which is in the front here, called the subscapularis. We, we open that up to get to the ball in the socket, and then we repair it at the end. So there's just a few things that we, we limit patients in the first six weeks to protect that repair until it heals. But once it heals, uh, we work on really regaining as much, as much range of motion as we can uh, and as much strength as we can after we regain the range of motion. Uh, they typically have a forward elevation uh, to a, about 150, uh, and these implants have been shown to be very, very durable uh, with greater than 90% of the implants in place at the 15-year mark, and the results of the surgery are, are outstanding at greater than 90% good or excellent results. Uh, in the right, uh, with the right indications in the right patient population. So she has been very, very happy with her new shoulder. I can lift my arm, you know, and it doesn't hurt anymore. So everything has just went wonderful. So very pleased. <laughs>